TitleMatchNetwork.com. Did you see the potential in Steve Austin and WCW? Yeah, I saw the potential. I saw the potential in Brian Pillman, but I knew they weren't baby faces, and I knew they shouldn't have been together because they weakened each other because they were so good. They should have been opposite sides of the ring, out beside one another. Brian Pillman. I knew Brian Pillman was good, but I knew he was no baby face. I guess we can talk about Brian now. I had some other questions, yeah. but uh, how did the whole Brian... Well, actually, we'll talk about it later because it falls into position. Okay. So, um, I guess, how did the whole Brian Pillman angle come about? <laughs> Brian and I were f pretty good friends. And I used to say to him, you know, you're really intense. You're really intense. So, as a heel, Brian, Brian was... This loose cannon character that he played was more like Brian. I used to hate the f flying Brian gimmick. Hey, you know, with that raspy voice of his, and you know, try to be a baby face. Even though he's a good looking guy, he should have been a heel. Because Brian was a heel at heart. Not a bad guy, but I mean, a heel at heart. Some performers should be heels. He should have been a heel. And one time we were talking, I said, you know, sometimes, the, you know, people will buy anything. I used to tell them about some of the guys in the dressing room years ago when I, Floor spit. No, nah, don't put it across to me. He said, Do you think, what do you think? And we started talking. I said, If the guys buy it, everybody buys it. And then when Brian and I worked that match, the pay per view, I had guys from the WWF tell me they bought it just to see me and Brian fight. You know, Brian was, and we, we, we kept it, and Brian, and Brian initiated it. I mean, there was one that would really put it over the edge. Eric called a, a meeting of all the talent in Disney. You know, that's what he used to do. And he was giving the guidelines of what the guys can do and what can't do because they're universal. And Brian came in late, first of all. So that was right up everybody's ass. So Bischoff wasn't in on it, right? Yeah, he was. Okay. Because yeah. I couldn't have done that without him. Right. So Brian came in late. So he's the only guy coming in late. So it pisses everybody off. And as Eric's talking about the, what can be done, what can't be done, you know, the guys are always murmuring, you know, when there's a bunch of people like that. Brian yelled out, well, does that go for the Book of Man too? And he could have hit a pin drop. And Eric just looked at Brian like, you know, you fucking idiot. I turned around and looked at him went like this to me, you know. And he looked like he was half of the bag. He went, you know, like, and I had more guys. It was a funny thing. I had more guys come up trying to suck up to me, you know, and say, oh, I can't stand that building. You should knock one of his ass. He's such a smart ass motherfucker. And I'd call Brian and he'd say to me, they'd say the exact same thing to me. And <laughs> those fuckers, you know, the same guys told me that he's no good. We're telling him I was no good. That's great. Yeah. Was there any heat with Bobby Heenan in the management after the incident with uh, <laughs> Brian and Bobby? No, but I'm sure Bobby hated it. I mean, that was another thing Brian did to put it over the top. I mean, Bobby say fuck on TV. Right. I mean, you know, if he, he, you thought he was out of his mind. And the announcers put it over because they were afraid of death of Brian. And Tony Schiaffini had a broken neck. So any time he rolled up, came in here close to him, they'd take their mics off. So if you're in a building and these fucking guys are sitting there for two hours with their headsets on and haven't moved, and then this one fucking guy just takes a bump and they take the headsets off and move back, what do you think that whole 20,000 people think? Right, right. This guy's real. Do you ever regret working the boys during this time? Yeah, I do. I do because I think, you know, I, I, here's the thing. I do regret working the boys, but at the situation it is, wasn't just, if it was just the boys, we could have done the angle. But it was the announcing team, the production team, everybody was smarting all the guys. You know, they'd right. say, we had people that were, I had this one girl who used to drive me crazy. I had, wherever the building was, I'd have a, my own room or like at Universal, I had my own little uh, uh, trailer with a, my monitor in there. And I would bring guys in for finishes and she was in the production and no, and she would wait until the main event finish guys get in there or Brian or, or somebody on top and she'd walk in and say, oh, I, I gotta fix your headset. Well, she had to fix it every night when the guys came, you know, the main event was coming in or something. You know, it used to piss me off, but, you know, I couldn't do anything because Turner Policy, I couldn't tell her, get the fuck out of here, you know, because I was corporate. Uh, do I, my, yeah, I, because I was working some of my friends, but some of my friends, were, I think, were picking up on the, uh, the end of it and saying, huh. Did you and Brian ever have to work Eric at all? Fish off on that. Eric and Brian were closer than, than Kevin and Eric. So I don't know how much, 
I I didn't let Eric know as much as Brian let Eric know because they were much closer. Right. They were friends. I wasn't friendly with Eric. Now, what kind of arrangement was made between ECW and uh, WCW for Brian to work there? Uh, I'm sh- Paulie knew it. Right. Paulie was I, I at this period. I we got together, Brian and I, and I said, "This ain't gonna float if you don't get the, you get away from here." You know, what I mean, there's gonna say. You know, it's causing shit. Like I said, guys coming up to Brian on one side saying, oh, hope you kick the shit out of him. Guys coming up to me saying, hope you kick the shit out of him. And Paulie was the only guy I could trust. So, I mean, that, that, that was a real strange relationship. So he was still under contract with WCW. He, when he yeah, there. yeah. And the idea was to bring him back when everything settled down? Yeah. So How did it work out that he wound up leaving the company and not staying? He worked Eric. He was the smartest guy I ever saw work Eric. At the time... Brian wanted to go to New York. He really wanted to go to New York. I think he wanted to break free, and I think he wanted a new start. And I think that he thought, no matter what, uh, I think he felt comfortable with me in my position with him. But he, we had seen so much turmoil in WCW. How, how he didn't know if I was going to be there another two hours, never mind another two weeks. With going to WWF, he knew Vince was the only guy to deal with. He knew. Vince would uh, accept his talents and accept his great ability, which he did. And I said this the other day when someone asked me in Miami Herald. I think he would have changed the wrestling business. Brian had, I, I don't know if you know the idea Brian wanted to do. Uh, Super Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. It's the greatest idea I ever heard. I wanted to do with him. You know, I said, I'll come down with you, you know, because I want to steal some of the limelight. Hmm. That was the best idea I ever heard. Brian was by far one of the most advanced thinkers in the wrestling business. But I, it was good for Brian to go to WWF because I don't think, I think if he came back, the politics were getting so heavy that some people would have tried to rub off on Brian, you know, sh- taking some of the shine off of Brian for their own good. Got, maybe got into Eric. And, but. Anybody in particular? Or? Well, there was a lot of people that knew that this kid guy was getting over, and, and, and our business is a business of one of survival. You know, people say, "Well, you know, I don't know a guy to do that." Well, you're not in that guy's position, so it's it's hard for to me to make judgment on anybody. But uh, Brian, really, you know, he and I think he saw what Cactus did up there, you know, and he saw what Austin had done. So he needed that break. He needed to get away, and I was glad to see him go. I, I glad as a friend, but really. Bad for a talent and a talent coordinator. I didn't want him to leave, though, but I knew it was going to happen. And he also came back to one night. It was Nitro when he did the thing with the 900 sign. And the yeah. Crowd. That was basically just part of it. Well, what happened was, uh, I think he worked Eric to a bidding wall. I can't be sure. <laughs> and he kept the Eric said, yeah. And then finally, he Brian was so smart, and they were so close. He went to Eric and said, let me try this and let me go. I want to give it a year's try. And Eric said, yeah, the door will be, always be open. It was almost like his relationship with Eric was sort of like my balls. TitleMatchNetwork.com